this is Jody. This is going to be the first cooking by the book with me. I'm going to be doing some mini apple pies. I have two or three different recipes that I'm kind of combining together because I didn't want to do a pie dough today. That can be a little complicated. So I was going to use just the Pillsbury ready-made dough to make it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. And the first thing we're going to do is always, 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 especially right now, we're going to wash our hands before we start and make sure that our workspace is clean and free of any debris or anything that doesn't really need to be there so that we can work really well. So I'm going to get started on cutting up my apples after I wash my hands. Hello again, we're going to start by cutting up three apples. I already cut two up just to make it a little bit quicker for the... And then um, you're just going to core it and then we're also going to peel them. We need to peel them. Um, you know, if you've ever, which I'm sure everybody here has had an apple pie, you don't get peel in your pie. It doesn't bake very well. So what you're going to do is you're just going to peel it like this after you pour it. Don't want to have any seeds in there. And what I usually do is the plastic bag. If you if you bring your uh, produce home in a plastic bag, I just use the plastic bag to put all of the core and um, peel in. It just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit friendlier. So this is what you're going to do. And then with this recipe, I'm going to be cutting them up into very small chunks because we're going to be cooking them pretty quickly. This recipe is going to go pretty fast. Um, so again, the apples are only gonna cook for maybe about 15 minutes, and then they're gonna be ready to uh, put in the little pie tins. So you have all that. And then what I've been doing is, I cut these in half because it does make it a little bit easier to get them smaller. And then you're going to put them in the pan and you're going to do this with all of them. Now that the apples are all cut up, we are going to add a half a cup of sugar. two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, and you can use uh, lemon juice that's not fresh. You can use it from, you know, the just the store-bought ones. And that's fine too. Um, if you do use fresh lemon juice, it does give it a little bit better of a, just, you know, a little bit better of a flavor maybe. But it's not imperative that you use fresh. Although I would, I would recommend it. And also I will say, what I've been doing lately is, if I have a recipe that calls for fresh lemon juice, I take the rind off the lemon first, because then you can freeze the rind and you can use it for other recipes, which is really kind of nice. Um, you know, if you, if you have like, 
something that you want to put a little bit more lemon flavor in or if you're doing like a lemon poppy seed bread you're going to want to have some um, fresh lemon rind to put in there and again like i said it's really nice because you can uh, freeze the rind and then just pull it out when you need it and I recommend doing this through a sieve not like I did it because it's a lot easier to just make sure none of the seeds get in there if you do it that way and we are going to use a teaspoon of cinnamon and there's going to be a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. There is cornstarch in this, but the cornstarch comes at the end when it's almost finished cooking and that's just so it can uh, tighten up a little bit. So we're going to put some cinnamon in there. We're going to put some a little bit of nutmeg. And I would say for your first time using this recipe, go ahead and follow the recipe and then you can make um, changes as you wish as you go on. Because you know, with every recipe, nothing is ever perfect. And it's sometimes it's just not um, the way that you want it to be. So it just makes it a little bit easier when you Follow the recipe the first time, and then after that, you can start messing around with it so just to get it to where you want it to be. Now that the apples are all cut up, we are going to add a half a cup of sugar. Two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, and you can use uh, lemon juice that's not fresh. You can use it from, you know, the just the store-bought ones. And that's fine too. Um, if you do use fresh lemon juice, it does give it a little bit better of a, just, you know, a little bit better of a flavor maybe. But it's not imperative that you use fresh. Although I would, I would recommend it. And also I will say what I've been doing lately is, if I have a recipe that calls for fresh lemon juice, I take the rind off the lemon first, because then you can freeze the rind and you can use it for other recipes, which is really kind of nice. Um, you know, if you, if you have like, something that you wanna put a little bit more lemon flavor in, or if you're doing like a lemon poppy seed bread, you're gonna to wanna to have some um, fresh lemon rind to put in there. And again, like I said, it's really nice because you can uh, freeze the rind and then just pull it out when you need it. And I recommend doing this through a sieve, not like I did it because it's a lot easier to just make sure none of the seeds get in there if you do it that way. And we are going to use a teaspoon of cinnamon 
and there's gonna be a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. There is cornstarch in this, but the cornstarch comes at the end when it's almost finished cooking, and that's just so it can uh, tighten up a little bit. So we're gonna put some cinnamon in there. We're gonna put some a little bit of nutmeg. And I would say for your first time using this recipe, go ahead and follow the recipe and then you can make um, changes as you wish, as you go on. Because you know, with every recipe, nothing is ever perfect. And it's sometimes it's just not um, the way that you want it to be. So it just makes it a little bit easier when you follow the recipe the first time and then after that you can start messing around with it so just to get it to where you want it to be. We have the apple mixture going. I'm going to go ahead and roll out the dough which is just the Pillsbury pie crust. Um, you know you can get the store just the regular store bought one too. I don't know if you have any particular brand that you like, but whatever is available, you can go ahead and use. I'm sure they're all pretty much the same. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll this out a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then I have a four inch cutter. Um, if you can find, uh, say like, a, if you have a cup that's four inches, if you have a, you know, anything that you're going to be able to make a cut with, then you can go ahead and use that. I found in making these the other day that they do have to be bigger than what's in the recipe that I got the um, apples from, which is the Southern Living um, uh, site website. So you're just going to go ahead and like this you're going to fit these in okay you're going to try to fit them in as evenly as possible going to have to go and just kind of maneuver them around a little bit and you know get them to where you want them to be and how you want them to look and uh, and then we'll be this back. This is what your pie shells are going to look like once you get them all in and um, we're just waiting for the apples to finish cooking and we're going to finish those up and then we'll get them into the, the um, crusts and we'll get them baked off. Um, like I said, if you have a crust recipe that you really like and you would rather use, that's perfectly fine too. I just decided to make it a little bit easier and let people know that it's okay to use the store-bought stuff if you don't have a recipe or if you don't have the, you know, ingredients hanging around. So it just makes it a little bit faster, a little bit easier. and. And it is a little bit more kid friendly too if you wanna do something like this with your kids. So I just took out two tablespoons of the liquid from the apples and I put in a teaspoon of cornstarch and I'm gonna pour it back into the apples and thicken them up a little bit. I want the apples to look like this where there's not so much liquid. There is liquid, but it's a little bit thicker. So it's not gonna go through the crust. We're now ready to fill up our little baking cups. We're gonna put in some apples into each one. And the thing is, is I would be a little bit sparing at first, and then you can go ahead, and the ones that don't have as much in them, you can go ahead at the end and add some, or you can just split it up in between all of them and have it that way. It just depends on what you wanna do, and again, if you, wanted to have more apples and you wanted to use more apples, feel free. Um, these recipes that I'm doing today or using today um, are gonna be available on, with, along with this video. I'm rolling 
out some more pie dough now. I wanted to show a few different variations of how you could decorate these. Let's make this a little bit thinner. You want to make sure that these bake. Now, you can do the classic just covering it up. Okay, so you can do this. And what I did was I just sort of pushed it underneath so that it wasn't hanging, you know, really hanging a lot. And then with this one, you can flatten it out. And then what you can do, what you're gonna wanna do is just sort of score it a little bit on the top so that the air can get out. This one I'm gonna show you is a lattice. And you're just gonna cut the round and then you're going to make some strips. And within these strips, what you're gonna do is, you can take three and then you can do three this way. And what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna go and you're just gonna continue to make a lattice. And what I've been doing is I've been going ahead and doing it and then putting it on top of the little pies. It just seemed a little bit easier to me that way to do it. For you, it may not be. Let me bring this over and I will show you what I did. So you're just going to straighten it out. And then again, what I did was I just kind of hooked it under just to sort of finish it off and, you know, make it so that the, uh, the ends weren't going to get really too dark. Okay. There was two variations of what you can do. The, the good thing about this is it can be fun and you can do whatever you want. Even if you didn't want to do all apple, you could put some cherry, you could put some blueberry. So you could have all different kinds of pies in there. Now I made a crumble mix and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumble some of this on top of the other ones. And then you'll have a French crumble apple pie. And I, this is probably one of my favorite pies. And the good thing about the crumble is, this is actually a Martha Stewart recipe. It's a very good recipe. And the nice thing is, if you don't use it all, you can freeze it. So you just put it in the freezer until you're ready to use it for something else. And you know, there are several different things that you could use it for, not just pie, or you could use it all and just do them all this way if you didn't want to fuss around with the other uh, variations that I showed you. The thing you're gonna wanna do before you bake them is you're gonna wanna apply a simple egg wash. Now, I don't have a pastry brush, but that is optimal to use. You can use your fingers. You just don't want to get too much on there because um, otherwise it's going to be kind of eggy. But like I said, you can use your finger. You're just going to dip your finger in and you're just going to go over the tops of the um, pie crust. And that's just going to give it like a nice um, kind of shiny texture to it. But it just kind of finishes it off a little bit and makes it look really nice baked this is what you're gonna get and what I'm gonna do now is just make a basic simple drizzle to put over the um, the ones with the crumb it's powdered sugar a little bit of vanilla and some whole milk that I um, pour in until it gets really um, a little bit you're gonna want to add the milk very slowly because I have found it's always easier to add a little bit more milk than it is to add more powdered sugar. 
So you just want to be really careful and not pour a whole lot in because the powdered sugar soaks up a lot and um, you know eventually you're going to get it to the right consistency, the consistency that you want. It just is going to take probably a few times to get it right of milk, you know, of pouring the milk in and then um, you're going to be able to have your drizzle. And this right here is still a little bit too thick. You see that? So it's, it's, you can drizzle it, but it's still a little too thick for my liking. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put in a little teensy bit more milk. Stir it up again. Get that all incorporated. And let's see if this is gonna make me happy. Maybe. Ah, uh, there we go. That's the consistency I want. So then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull your pan over and you're gonna just drizzle a little bit over the crumb mixture. And that just kind of makes it fit a little bit more finished off and um, you know gives it gives the added a little bit more sweetness to it which i don't know about you but i have a sweet tooth so i i kind of like that little little bit more of sweet well, i hope you enjoyed the first baking by the book with me jody de Groot from the albert wisner public library um, i hope that you try these and that you really like them and um you know, just be safe, be well, and keep baking.